Are we streaming? I believe so. For the record, it's taking everything I have not to burp directly into the microphone. I'm not sure why that is. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, and I'm sure everybody else thanks me for not burping right into the microphone. Oh, and for the record, for <laughs> earlier, <laughs> there will be consequences. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I was recording audio. Yeah. You swirled your iced coffee directly into the microphone. <laughs> I let everybody know what that weird sound it was that they heard in the podcast. And there are consequences for me? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Gosh, it's good to be a dominant, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. We're two minutes early. Okay. We're getting... You talk. We're having... I need to do some... Are we having technical difficulties? I believe so. Oh, Lord. It says the internet can totally see you now. I believe that. I believe the internet can see me. I'm pretty sure the internet's looking at me all the time. That's a scary thing. There is a stutter start to our screen for yeah. sure. So hopefully if you can hear us and see us, it will get better in a minute. If you cannot hear us or see us, we are sorry. Oh, yeah, that is a weird picture on the... Yeah, hmm. Okay, somebody can see us. Yay! Yes, Ben, it's good to be the king. Yeah, clearly. That's right. That's right. So if you don't normally listen to the podcast, if nothing else on Friday, listen to the first, like, what, two minutes where I'm doing the intro? Yeah, you'll hear the ice before you see, and see what nobody else knows is that you're swirling the ice and I'm waving my hand at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm optimizing my coffee. Do you know how many comments I get from people who are like, I'm glad you said that was ice. I didn't know what that sound was in the background. Yeah, but I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Because I called you out on it? Because you were snarky and sassy about it. Well, yeah, it's the intro. I'm supposed to be snarky and sassy. That's what we do. Or that's what I do. Mm. Ooh, our stream health is not very good. No, that's why I... Yeah, what is going on? I don't know. Hmm, if you need to go turn off my phone, we can do that. We're going to take a couple minutes, y'all, to okay. get our stream health back. All right, let me do that. Yeah, feel free to turn off anything of mine that we need okay. to. It shouldn't be this way, but no. who the heck knows? <laughs> I will be reading that comment to John Brownstone as soon as he can hear me. Ben, thank you. Yes, we had many conversations about please don't vape directly into a microphone. It was hard enough to get him to sit close enough to the microphone at first anyway. And then he would vape into it. Yeah, I've had a lot of people say something about that before i don't know it is what it is we are gonna wait we're gonna try and get the stream acting a little bit better your phone is a wall mm, oh on the table over there now we don't know where my phone is but i know where my phone is because of course i do i am super baby girl i'm just making shit up now as we stall for time uh Isn't it that button that turns it off? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wouldn't do it for it me. It wouldn't do it for you. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, y'all. I Normally, we would get right into it if you're just joining us. We're making sure our stream health is good. All right. I've done everything I can at this point. I know. Um, anybody who can, if it's... Oh, we have the green. It says our stream health is good. Okay. Okay. We're still... Our view, y'all, is very stutter stop. It's not fluid like it's supposed to be. I don't know what your view is. Um, ooh, hopefully we'll get through this. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. If there's any audio or, or video problems, comments, and we will try to punt. Joseph says it looks good to you. Great. Okay. okay. Maybe it's good. the umpteen million tabs you have open in your browsers. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, 
Let's get into the show yes. real quick. Let's do our YouTube housekeeping thing. If you are not already subscribed and you actually enjoy this stuff, please feel free to subscribe. If you have subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell because apparently sometimes that actually works and you actually get notified when we do shit. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you actually like what we do, give us a like. That helps us too. And don't forget, you can become a kinky patron of ours mm -hmm. at patreon.com slash klords. Okay, all of the housekeeping. <laughs> Today's today's live stream, this week's episode, the show. I never know what to call it anymore. We are gonna probably both rant. I was ranting in the car to go pick up coffee still. To yourself. To myself. Wow. I know, like getting mad, like my throat hurts. So we had something happen. We've been out and about in our kinky community. Um uh as we've been trying to like find our way through to where our kinky community is, our local mm -hmm. kinky community. You guys watching, and if you follow us on social media, to us, you're our kinky community, but that's our online kinky community. We were trying to have an in-person kinky community. And we have gone to a few things now. And at one of our most recent events that we went to, we had such a bad time that we almost left. Yeah. We were ready to leave it was that yes. bad. So we're gonna talk about what happened to us because the way I look at life is if it's happening to me, I'm not some special snowflake. It happens to other people. Um, and it was sort of a wake up call because if I could feel this way with the experience and what I, we do for a freaking living in my own local kink community, I can only imagine how other people might feel. And then some thoughts on how to be better. Yes. Okay. But, um, yeah, we are totally gonna rant because I can't stop ranting. <laughs> like, I just can't. Mm -hmm. I keep trying to be really measured about it. Right. Because I think there are, there's always two sides. You know, there's always another perspective to look at. And I still cannot stop ranting. So we're gonna get into the show. We're gonna do our general announcements for everybody. Live stream okay. watchers, you know how we do. We gotta do it for the podcast listeners mm -hmm. too. So here we go. Let's do our show. Okay, right. so we do have two announcements. Yes. We are sponsored this week again by The Cage, which ironically enough, we're talking about kink communities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you are not um, able to get or if you don't feel comfortable in your local kink community and you want to meet kinksters, online is valid. There will be people who tell you it's not. They are wrong, in my opinion. Um, and if you're if you're over fat life, or if you've done the fat life thing, or if you just really don't like fat life, the cage is another viable option. What I yeah. really like about them is you can go explore what they're about before you ever log in, so you don't have to register and give all your information before you can see anything. You can just go and click around. Now you can't do anything until you register, but that's okay. Sure. So there's two levels. There's the free. It's always free to join put your information in, you get access to nearly everything. There's forums, there's blogs, there's question and answer, there's all kinds of stuff. There's personal ads where you can meet people, all of that. If you upgrade to the premium, then you get unlimited instant messaging and unlimited chats and some extra perks. Now, because they liked us pretty good uh, and they sponsored the show, <laughs> if you use the code LOVINGBDSM at thecage.co, for YouTube watchers, the mm -hmm. link is below in the description. I actually got it there this time. Um, you can get two weeks of premium for free and you don't have to put mm -hmm. a credit card in. So, thecage.co, code is loving BDSM, get two weeks of total mm -hmm. access for free. I created an account there. Did you really? Yeah. You're so, see, you're my social butterfly. Yeah. I'm like, no, I know these two things and that's all I'm doing. Well, it's like, I've, I've heard of the cage and since they're a sponsor, I decided, let me go take a look. Well, I mean, that is really yeah. the, the way I should have done it, too. I'm yeah. not So I, I went and created an account, and uh, it's a pretty cool site. I like, I like the way it, it set up. It, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty intuitive. It's pretty it easy to, to navigate. They also have, and we get this question a lot, especially from podcast listeners. They're like, I love your podcast. Can I listen to other podcasts? Yes, they have a whole list of other key yes, podcasts that you can go listen to. So if that's your thing, haha. -ha. Now, uh, they gave us a bunch of information so that we could share with you. And I want to talk about privacy and anonymity because that is usually people's biggest issue. One, right. 
being out in the community, whether online or in person, and then of course to being online, privacy is an issue. So this is how they describe it, y'all. So user authenticity and safety are legitimate concerns for everyone, especially us Kingsters. Mm -hmm. The cage utilizes, utilizes, I can read, multiple <laughs> layers of automatic and manual moderation for user verification and filtering. And you do have to verify that you are who you say you are for certain things. Mm -hmm. This includes a responsive user report system, which encourages the community to be involved in keeping the site safe and friendly. See something, don't like it, report it, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this helps with filtering out fakes, scammers, duplicates, and money solicitors. This is not a place to solicit sex work, y'all. I have no problem with sex work. Sex work is work. The cage is not a place for that. So I'm sure that has a lot to do with the recent laws that I am not qualified to talk about, but just so you know, so if you are like a fin dom kind of thing with financial domination, yeah, that's probably not gonna go so well. Um, so users who make financial officers or requests get banned, know that going in. Mm -hmm. um, you do not have to use your real name to sign up. You can use whatever name you, want to use they offer anonymous payment methods which only identify you by your nickname if you choose to go premium uh you do have to use phone verification when you register but the information is kept private so mm -hmm. that is an important tool i've used it in a lot of different sites to kind of make sure you are who you say you are and to filter out the fakes so if privacy and anonymity are a concern of yours They've got their information online. Do not take our word for it. Please do your research. But thecage.co is the place to go. The code, if you want to get full access to premium for two weeks, is loving BDSM. Okay. okay. The second thing. Oh, my Lord, we're never going to get into the episode. Lord, <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. Um, the second thing is we are on a list of potential nominees for this year's podcast awards. Mm -hmm. We ended up getting nominated last year. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all, full disclosure, I have to put myself on this list so they even know we exist. It's not because somebody thought I was so great that I ended up on, we ended up on this list. We had to put ourselves on the list. But in order to get to the short list of they will actually consider you for an award, that's where we need our listeners help. Yes. Um, the website is podcastawards.com. You do have to register. I registered so I could do it. Um, and then you go in and you nominate in each category, you nominate the podcast you like that's listed there. So if you're listening to lots of other podcasts and they come up in some of those other categories, you can nominate them too. Um, but you can find Loving BDSM in the People's Choice category and the Society and Culture. Last mm. year we were in the Mature category. Mm. Uh, I don't know why they don't have that category this year. I'm not questioning it. We're in Society and Culture. Because hmm. BDSM is a culture. It's a yeah. lifestyle. It is. It didn't qualify under LGBTQ. I was not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole debate out there about BDSM and LGBTQ, but I don't know. I feel like that was where we needed to make a stand on it. I just put us in society <laughs> and culture. Thank you. <laughs> so podcastawards.com. Uh, YouTube watchers, it, it, the link to it is in the description below. And podcast listeners, who would be more likely to nominate us anyway, uh, it, it, the link is in the show notes. So that is open, I think, through the whole month of July. Um, so we might mention it again going forward. So done, 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 done. Done, done? We're done. Done, 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 done. Done, 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 done. Yeah, exactly. Done, okay. done, done, done. Okay. <laughs> Do we trust me to start this conversation? Because I want to be, I want to be fair to the community. I know. I don't want, I guess maybe some disclaimers first. I think that the people who host events, put on events, munches, workshops, educational events, all of those things are doing a massive service to the community. I think yeah. that they, their effort deserves our respect that they do something that I don't necessarily want to do that a lot right. of us don't want to do. And many of it's, us benefit from their it, work. It's a lot of work. It is a lot to, of work. To put into putting on a munch or a workshop. Um, you have to find a venue that is willing to host us. Right. Okay. Which is no small feat in and of itself. Then you have to create an event. You have to post it. You have to promote it. Then you have to host the damn thing right. and get people there. So, so there is a lot that goes into this. It's not right. just, you know, at the drop of a hat, um, a, a munch, you know, springs up out of nowhere or, or a workshop right. happens. Right. So the, we say all that because to the people out there who are doing that work, we are grateful that you are doing the work mm -hmm. because you are giving Kingsters just like us the opportunity to go out into our local community and meet each other and get educated and have experiences and connect. Right. Thank you. 
<laughs> but there's some problems. And it's not universal. No. It is not at all universal. It is not... Um, I talked to enough Kingsters who are like, oh my gosh, I went to my first munch and it was great. I had the best time ever. And then I've talked to people who go to their first munch and they're like, oh my God, this was a hellscape. What did you send me into? So there's a lot of room. You know, it's a spectrum. There's some really great mm -hmm. ones. There's some really not so great ones. There's a lot in the middle that are sometimes right. good. Sometimes it could be better. I think there's some blind spots and I think there's always room for improvement even if you have the best ever kink event, munch, whatever. So here's our experience. I'm not going to name locations because I don't want to disparage our own local community. That's not cool either. No. We went on Friday to a munch. And I never look forward to these things because I know I have social anxiety and I'm not good with meeting new people. Hmm. But we went. You were excited. Yeah. We were going to a restaurant I liked, so that helped. Mm -hmm. Wore a cute dress that I have shrunk down into. You Thank you very, very much. Nice. Thank yes. you. Was feeling sassy. Great, should have taken a picture. Anyway, we go and we got there about 10 minutes later. Then we meant to. We ran into yeah. really bad weather and it just slowed bad us down. Bad weather and traffic, Friday night traffic. Right, it just slowed us down. So we get there 10 minutes late. But they had the table set up and the one table seated, ultimately ended up seating like nine people. But four people were there and there were empty seats. And that's where we sat down. Mm -hmm. Now, when we walked up, people did go, hi, from their seats. And then when we sat down, they were done. Mm -hmm. They didn't say anything. Again. Which, okay. But also, we were sitting at a table that had four people already there. It was two across from two. And then we took the seats to the side. Those people in our space never said a word. In fact, <laughs> the person yeah. sitting next to me, directly next to me, actually turned their body so I saw their shoulder and part of their back the whole rest of the evening. Mm -hmm. A few more people came in who were well known to this community. This is not a community that we're well known in. That's fine. They show up hugs and highs all around. People had to actually move and shift seats so they could get into where the empty seats right. were. That was fun and fine and people were talking. A person finally did come up and introduce themselves to us and then made a disparaging remark about the fact that uh, John Brownstone has a man bag. So I don't have yeah. to carry his shit. I think his man bag is really fucking nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a leather messenger bag. It's fucking chic as hell. Don't get me started on that person <laughs> because I was ready to crawl over John Brownstone to say something and I didn't. But that person at least came over and introduced themselves to us before they then mm -hmm. monopolized the conversation of the people across from us who had just arrived and were basically friendly. We yeah. were like, oh cool, we're not completely alone in this place. Great, these people seem friendly and it was about to turn around. Yes. Until... It didn't. It didn't. Now, first of all, we had horrible service at this restaurant, which broke my heart because I love that particular restaurant. And second, we sat there for almost the entire, what, hour and a half we were there? Maybe a little uh, less. About at least a solid hour, good hour. With nobody speaking to us. Nobody. Nobody. Now, I don't think we were the only newbies there. I think no. there were a couple other people who were new. And I think that they were fortunate that who they ended up talking to first, like, latched onto them like you sometimes do with new people because mm -hmm. you're like oh we can have a conversation the rest of the place and it filled up they actually had, ended up having to like find extra seats they didn't have enough seating those people all knew each other and how do i know because i watched them hug and laugh and oh it's so good to see you and oh i haven't seen you in so long and we sat there like an island like an absolute island Pretty in much. a sea of people who basically on some level knew each other mm -hmm. i have never felt alone in my own kinky community in a crowd no, before. That's not true. Me. I have years ago when we still lived in our old area, but that was years ago. That was a one-off. Right. This was, this was hard. This was like, now he, he all have to understand, we do not stroll up into a kink event and go, well, I'm fucking Kayla Lord's 11 BDSM, motherfucker. No. Like, we don't do that. No. We do not announce ourselves. If somebody recognizes us, cool, cool, cool. We'll talk. We enjoy that. That's fine. But we're just two regular Kingster people. Mm -hmm. Nobody there knew if we had any experience, how experienced we were, if this was our first munch or if this was just our first munch, going to that munch. They didn't know anything about us. 
And all I could think, I'm handling it better. I've, I think I've calmed down because, man, I was like on fire a couple days ago thinking about this. All I could think was if I feel that alone with my, the amount of experience I've got, which some people have more experience, with what I do for a freaking living, with how we conduct ourselves mm-hmm. in our online community, if I can sit in a group of what? I would say by the time it was done, there was probably 20 or 30 people. Easily. And feel completely alone and unseen and ignored and like nobody gave two shits that we had walked in. Not we, because we're Kayla Lords and John Brownstone. We were two fucking kinksters. Yeah. If I could feel like that, all I could imagine was how somebody who doesn't have that background and doesn't have that experience and doesn't have other experiences with the kink community to fall back on and to draw from, how they would feel. Right. And we almost did not go to the event that came after that because it was an awful feeling. Because all we could think was, if you don't give a shit that we're here, why would you give a shit that we're there? And why right. should we, why are we spending our time here? Now, I want to be clear because there's always going to be somebody who's going to be grumpy and want to come at me. I do not think that the whole world was supposed to fall all over themselves because we walked into the fucking room. That's not what I think at all. But I do think that it is important on some level, whether it's at the host level or just basic politeness with your seatmate in a shared table, for basic kindness. Not want to get to know me and become a best friend. I don't do that with people I don't know anyway. But uh, hey, how are you? Is this your first time? Oh, cool. My mm-hmm. name is, oh, my name is. And you could have left it at that. Like you could have ignored me the whole rest of the fucking time. I would have known I was seen. I would have known that somebody acknowledged my presence here. I would have known that somebody understood that I didn't know anybody else. If you didn't know me and nobody else knew me, I'm probably new. Mm-hmm. And we got none of that. Absolutely none of that. None of that. Now, Eva, none Eva that. made a, a something that her mother said. Did we try to start a conversation? And with I some have of these been people? thinking about that. And and to a certain extent, we did. We actually, did. A bit. We did with with the with the woman sitting across from us, and and we did try to get start conversation, but once her friends showed up, showed up they were involved. They, in themselves. they were involved in their own conversation about their own activities right. and and you know what i on one level i get that i know how that can happen mm-hmm. it was nice of that person to take to make that effort prior to that because it did make us feel more welcome but i have been thinking that question is valid well why didn't you start a conversation here's what i'm gonna say to you you probably wouldn't if we if the vibe had been different mm-hmm It is easier to start the conversation because for us, it is about the energy. If I feel like I'm literally being ignored, what would be my impetus to walk up to somebody and go, hi, will you talk to me, please? Like, that's not going to happen. But here's my other point. And this is the thing I've been thinking about a lot because I do think that's a valid question to ask. When you are new to a local community, whether you're a brand new kingster and this is your first month or you've been going to munches for 100 years, but this is Mm -hmm. the first time in this community... You did the hardest part. You've already put in the effort. You left your fucking house. You went to a place where you know not a fucking soul. You walked in. You, we smiled. We waved yeah. hi. We were prepared to do that dance of, my name is, oh, hi, my name is, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Right? We were prepared. We got none of that. We got shut out. And I think once you've done the hard part of being, especially being brand new, it takes a lot less effort to be the established person who's been going to that event for long enough to at least know a couple mm-hmm. of people to then extend the, hey, you're new here, my name is. Like, it's that. It's not, I didn't want personal history. I didn't want somebody to take me arm in arm. I'm not looking for a fucking babysitter. Right. I just want somebody to say hi to me and yeah. introduce themselves. And I think that in that situation, because we have all been new every one of Mm -hmm. us if you've gone to a munch you went to your first munch at some point we know that feeling whether you're really outgoing and you don't have any anxieties about being new to the person with actual crippling social anxiety who still managed to do it and we all know what it's like to be new and since we all have that experience that is a shared experience then in my mind the person who's not new like i wouldn't expect another newbie to a munch 
to say hi to me. They, they're new too. They're probably just as nervous as I am. <laughs> but if you are not new and you remember what it feels like and you're not at least at the table that you're sitting at with a person going, hey, my name is, then you've put an even, like, why do I have to make that second step? I already made the first big leap to get there, yeah. to stand in a group of strangers. Mm -hmm. now, I now, got Captain, hot, y'all. <laughs> uh, you, you got worked up there. Well, Captain wanted to know if this was a smaller area or a town lunch. Um, this was in a, in a big city. This is a big city. This, this was in a big this city. This one was in this a big one city. This one was in a big city. We've had this happen now, to we, us in smaller areas, we, too. We had a similar experience in, in a smaller area. Um went to to a smaller munch in a, in a small town and it was mostly group of people who have apparently known each other for years and years and years years and years. um we came in um nobody introduced themselves as the facilitator of the group um introduced ourselves to two people that we thought were possibly the facilitators of the group we didn't know <laughs> and they were just like yeah okay uh yeah, yeah. have a seat they never circulated um, At the last one we went to on friday the same thing whoever was the facilitator i finally figured it out through deductive reasoning at the follow-up event after the month right and that's when i figured it out yeah. and that is when my empathy came out because I had been feeling really shitty at that point mm -hmm. because I learned, again, deductive reasoning and because and I watch everything and I'm just nosy, yeah. that that person likely had some level of anxiety. So the larger the crowd, the harder it was for that person yeah. to sort of function. And here's the thing. I have all of the empathy I can muster that I possess for somebody who has any level of anxiety and still tries to put together something because I already know you've used like all your energy mm -hmm. to do that. And so that's why I don't want it to sound like I'm blaming all organizers or hosts. I think that hosts could do better, but I also think hosts don't realize the choices that they can make that they're not, they're not necessarily making. If you yourself as a host are too anxious to say hi to new people, believe me, preach, I, I get that. Then who out of the group that you know some, you're going to know somebody who is more outgoing than you. Can you ask them, hey, can you do me a favor? We got some new people. Can you just go say hi to them, make sure they're okay for me? That would be a huge help. And I think mm -hmm. most of us, there's always going to be one asshole, but most of us, if we have a friend of ours come to us and say, hey, I'm really struggling today with greeting new people, but we got a big munch or we got a big whatever. Could you yeah. help me out today? Most of us are going to say, yeah, it'd be weird. It'll be hard. It will be uncomfortable maybe to be in that position, but most of us are going to say yes. And that mm -hmm. is that I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. Cause I don't think it's enough to bitch about problems. I think there should be like suggestions and solutions and methods and things to think about. And that is what I would encourage those hosts and those facilitators who do struggle with that because hi, I'm over here with my own social anxiety, my own generalized anxiety, and some days mm -hmm. I can't talk to people either. And I totally fucking get it. But here's the thing. That person walking in does not know that you have something going on in your head that makes right. this a struggle for you. All they know is that they have been ignored and forgotten and overlooked and that nobody gave a shit that they came. So what makes them want to come back again? Yeah. And, you know... Even for me, all right, I don't have anxiety like Kayla does, but I am actually a, a naturally shy person until I get to know somebody, mm -hmm. until I warm up to people, I don't really talk very much. And, you know, I, I know from this, um, it, it sounds like, like it's all terrible. Now, I will say it, it's not. There was another munch that we attended. Actually, I went to that one first myself. Right, because it was right after the move, and I went, yeah. I don't have the mental energy for right. this. <laughs> and it was a fantastic group. Um, as, as a new person walking in, uh, new, new to the group, uh, I was welcomed. I, immediately. I was, immediately. Um, I was brought into the conversation. Um, I, I was welcomed. Everybody in the group that was there introduced themselves. Mm -hmm. 
It reminded me when I went this last time. It reminded me of our old lunch. Yes, because that's how we handled it. When somebody new and, came in, we just like, and that, introduced that's ourselves. exactly how we handled it. Um, the munch we went to in our old town, uh, we actually ended up hosting it for about eight months. Yeah, we were like the, the babysitters of it. We, yeah, because we knew it was temporary. We knew we were moving, so right, we just right. needed to keep it going until somebody yeah. else could take over for us. So, you know when. There, there was always a core group of people that attended that munch. It had been attending that munch for years. Um, whenever somebody new was there, we all introduced ourselves. We just go around. I mean, we, no matter how many tables there were or how big the tables were, the whole thing. And if right. somebody new came in later, you did, did it, it again. again. <laughs> and and you know we would ask them questions to con to to have conversation with them, and and you know make them feel welcome as as best we could. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm I'm going to relay a story. I don't have consent to say who the person is, but a um, very dear friend of mine back in in Clearwater um, attended a munch there for the first time. Uh, last month and two people there that I happen to know he told me who they were um, both longtime people in the community um, people I respect um, took him under their wing made made this person feel welcome um, sat and talked with them uh, even uh, had them go to Phoenix mm, the club yep and they went, was there and greeted them there at the club, showed them around, talked with them, introduced them to people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, to me, is, is what the community is about. I mean, it's, it's easy enough to feel isolated in, in the fact that we like what we like, mm -hmm. okay, because it's not the social norm, all right? And when you walk into a group of, of people who like the same things that you like and you're made to feel outcast, that's a very unsettling feeling. Right, because you already feel kind of outcast because here I am a kingster. I can't let anybody know yeah. I'm a kingster. I could lose my job. I could lose my this. Uh-oh. And now, then, yeah, to not find maybe, maybe I was very lucky because when this all came about, I mean, I'm going to tell the story again. I have to. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I know. He's a story repeater, y'all. Um, I'm a story repeater. Okay. Um, for many years before I entered the, the community, the, the real community, live community, um, I lurked about online. Okay. I chat rooms, you know, different websites, this, that, and the other. That was the way I began my journey in, into DS. Um, at one point, I learned that there were actually live events that these people attended and, and met up. And it took me a while to get the courage up you, to go to one of these it events. It usually takes most of us yeah. a while to get the courage up to go. Well, I, I picked a day and I went. And to this day, I still remember their names, um, see their faces. When I walked in, didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if there was going to be people there in <laughs> full leathers, full, full leathers and, and <laughs> everything. Gear. Yeah, and and that's not what munches are about, as I learned very quickly that day. As we keep telling y'all, if you yeah. haven't gone to one yet. <laughs> but what happened was the the people who ran the munch realized I was new, new new at that time. Oh, I'm sure they saw the shine all oh, over yeah, you at that right? point. Yeah, yeah. I, I still had the, the mother's milk around my Oh, you know. yeah, oh, yeah. But what they did was they sat with me and they talked with me, asked me what I knew about the lifestyle, what what I felt I was. They, they talked to me. They made me feel welcome. Um, they, uh, any misconceptions that I had, they, they put that to rest. You know, it, it was really an amazing experience. Right, which has stayed with you all this time. Yes. And it has informed how you are in the community because you had that experience and so you sort of pay it forward. Mm -hmm. Maybe not with the, um, 
the intensity that they did with you. We have seen one of our good friends, he does that. If there's a munch where a total newbie, like wet behind the ear shows up, he's friendly during the munch. And then as the munch is ending, if the vibe is right and he can get into a conversation with them, he'll have them there for as long as they're willing to stay yeah. answering any question. Like that's his nature. Now two he goes, things- He goes into one-on-one mode. Oh, he does. Now two things have come up in the live chat. So podcast listeners, you can't see this, but mm-hmm. they both need to be addressed. So. Okay. Timey said, maybe some people are into their own comfort zone and think others will go through the effort to meet new people. And then Captain said that they, you know, sort of understood what we we're getting at, that maybe it's not the coordinator's fault, but maybe the coordinator sort of, sort of needs to maybe assign somebody to help or be on top of this. And here's, that's why I would never turn on mics just to bitch. If I wanted to do that, we'd go like on IG live. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not do a whole episode just to bitch. So I want to, you've both hit the nail on the head of what yeah. we have both been thinking. So part of the reason to say this is not to scare new people away from munches, which no. we might have done. I'm sorry. That's not my intention. It is to do two things. One, if you are a person going to local munches and events, you're not hosting them, you're just attending and you're relatively comfortable in the space, meaning you've gone there enough times that you recognize people and the vibe is good that you'll keep going back. What I'm hoping is that you will hear this and then you will say the next time you see somebody new, maybe you'll say hi to them, if especially if nobody else is, or you'll make the effort to go, oh, there's a new person, I don't recognize them. Let me go introduce myself. They might be a total asshole and you might not like them, that's fine. We're not going to all like one another. Mm-hmm. That's okay. But you made the effort because you've now heard from people who have had that experience and it's on top of your mind. The other thing that I'm hoping is because we know a few people who in their local areas coordinate events and they, I mean, I've kind of watched them work online and hear what they talk about. And I know they bust their ass to make the best events that they can, Yeah, but maybe they and other coordinators and facilitators and hosts will keep that in mind, especially if the event, the meeting, the whatever is not growing the way you'd like. If you keep getting only the same people every time and new people never come back again, there's a reason somewhere. And it yeah. could it could be it could be all kinds of stuff, but it part of it could be that people without anybody intending it, are feeling like ignored, feeling unseen, mm-hmm. feeling unwelcome. And what can we as a greater, larger community do when we are in our own comfort zone, when we know we're at an event that we've gone to a million times, what can we do to make the people around us a little bit more comfortable, to say mm-hmm. hi to the new person, to reach out, to be that person that welcomes this newbie into the community? You may never speak to them again, but I promise you they will likely remember that you were the Mm -hmm. first nice, friendly face that they saw. You were the one that said, hey, come sit with us. No, 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 it's fine. Here's a menu. Here's like whatever it is. And it's (laughs) basic kindness that we all know is just really easy to get out of that habit and to forget because we're all so busy and we're all so used to being really quick with one another and really short. And many of us don't think about the manners that our parents probably drilled into our heads. I know I don't, I'm not, you know, constantly going, oh, excuse me, pardon me, thank you, you're welcome. Like I forget that stuff too, but the community is supposed to be different. And I know that I am the baby girl optimist who wants to see the good in everything. I know that about myself. So I know that I can paint a picture of the kinky community as something bright and shiny and wonderful. And most of the time it is. There is some dark underbellies. There is drama. There are problems. Mm -hmm. Of course there are. Of course there are. But if we are all conscientious of our place in the community, that the munch is not just the place we get to go to lunch once a month and, you know, maybe see somebody we know, that this is our way to connect as kinksters, knowing that we do something that the greater society at large thinks is immoral, unethical, and awful, that we connect in the fact that we don't live like everybody else lives. We don't do things like everybody else does. And that's mm-hmm. our the beginning point of our connection. You know, if we can remember that, then it is easier to create connections. I know that we live a very strange life. I talk about sex and kink every day of the week, truly. Every single day yeah. of the week, that is what I talk about. Whether I'm writing it, or I'm recording it, or I'm answering an email, that is what I do. 
And I have found the more I do that, the more comfortable I am being friends with people who know that I'm kinky. Like I actually find it harder to make pure vanilla friends at this point to the point that I don't remember the last completely vanilla person I befriended. It's been a very long time. And I know that's not normal for most people, but I think if you give yourself the chance to open up just a teeny tiny bit, to just be open to the possibility that you really never know when your next cool person connection will walk through the door of the munch and just start by saying hi. Like the more friends I have in kink, the more I walk around life feeling fully myself. Like I don't feel like my vanilla half and my kink half are somehow mm -hmm. split apart because I have friends that if they hear me call John Brownstone daddy, they're not gonna flinch. They're not gonna blink. They might even refer to him like, have you asked your daddy about that? Like those are, those are comforts that some of us don't, you don't really think about until you have them. And then once you have them, it's very easy to get really comfortable and forget that not everybody else does have that. And I just, the word we kept coming up with when we were like, it was steaming. Like I really think smoke was coming out of our ears on Friday. It was such a bad feeling because I was angry too. I wasn't angry for us. I wasn't angry because of the way that event went. I was angry on behalf of anybody who'd ever felt that way mm -hmm. that didn't have the background that we have that went, oh, that's what a munch is like. That damn Kayla Lords told me to go to a fucking lunch and that's what it's like. And they never <laughs> went back again. Like I was yeah. so angry for those people. Yeah that steam was coming out of my ears. Mm -hmm. But the word we came up with, and I think this happens to all people, this is not a I'm better than you, it, that it doesn't happen, it happens to all of us. And it's complacency. Yes. We get used to seeing the same people over and over again. We get used to the routines we get into. We get used to the way things always are. And it can be really challenging to step outside of that and go, well, we always hold this munch this way, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different because Kayla Lords told me to. <laughs> if you need to blame me, it's fine. If it makes somebody feel more welcome, I'll it's take all it. Her it's fault. all my fault. Um, you know, it, it is difficult. And, it, and getting into a routine, getting into habits, getting into the way things always are, it happens to it's all of us. It's it easy to have. It's easy to have. Yes. Everybody, everybody on the planet goes through that. But I'm hoping my ranting to the point that my throat hurts right now Goodness. will help people think about that the next time you're in one of those spaces where. Well, we just always never introduce ourselves to the new person who sat down next to us. Can we please rethink that? At the very least, I'm not asking anybody to get up from their table across the restaurant or the bar or the wherever and walk a hundred yards to go say hi to them. I'm not. If you're sitting at a table with a person though, could you just say hi? I don't want to be your best friend. I'm not trying to be your best friend. I just... But you never know. You, you, you know, they might I mean, be your best they, they might be. You never you, know. You never know. I know. And my, my optimistic baby girl heart goes, you know what? You never know. They could be your new best friend. And you, you got comfortable or you got shy. Now, I said this in the blog post I wrote this week about that was partly about this, but partly about other things mm -hmm. we can do as good community members. You get to have your own personal boundaries. You get to have your own limits. And you have to take care of yourself first and foremost. Okay? So says the chick who has moments I literally cannot speak to people I do not know I will hyperventilate you have to take care of yourself I am yeah. not asking anybody to turn themselves inside out and become a human being that they actually are not to do this all I'm asking is when you have the capacity to do it if it is within your capacity to do it to just look come outside of your personal bubble. Like I have a, a bubble, it's a three foot bubble, okay? Only certain people get to come in my bubble. And I forget sometimes to just turn my head one way or the other to see mm -hmm. who's just on the periphery of my bubble. When you have the capacity to do that, when your head is in the right place to do it, when you are comfortable and you are relaxed and it will not send you into some really bad distress to do it, just look beyond the bounds of your own bubble. It's all I'm asking. Because you don't have to say hi to every soul that walks through the munch, but you know what? Saying hi to one person, you do not know what you will do for them. Yep. You don't know. You don't know how you'll help them. You don't know if you'll be the one that encouraged them to get more involved. You might be looking at the next kink educator. Yeah. You don't know. People grow so much on this journey. And most of the time, 99% of the time, it's because of whoever helped them when they were still newbies, when they still yeah. didn't know shit yet. 
was who was nice to them and who was there for them and who talked to them and who taught them and who was part of their journey. And sometimes a simple hello is all it takes, is all it takes. And that, I am so hot. <laughs> it's how I feel about all that. And I went on so many rants, I didn't even look at my notes. And so no, now I have to didn't. make sure I didn't miss any points. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, one oh one of the things we did talk about through all this, um, now luckily we did find a group that, you know, after being there two times, um, we know this is that's where, our home that, lunch. That's, that's where we want to be. Yep, that's our home lunch. But if we hadn't found that, we did talk about starting our own. Oh yeah, we had decided that before we moved. We we're like, okay. Yeah. We knew that our local area's munch was in a little bit of disarray before we moved. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what was going to happen as a result. We didn't right. know what we'd find in outer areas. We didn't know how far we'd be willing to drive. I mean, you got to have the, the willingness to do that too. True. And we had decided absolutely that if we couldn't find something we liked, mm-hmm. we'd just start our own damn thing. And if it was just the two of us having coffee once a month, well, we'd do that anyway. Yep. And then the more the merrier. Now... So part of my notes, because this cannot just be a bitch fest, I can't. <laughs> I'm starting to finally get comfortable calling us kink educators, even though it makes me twitchy. Um, so there's got to be some fucking education here. <laughs> Not just me ranting. And I am so hot because of these rants. So I do want to run down. We, I kind of threw them out in between my spitting mad anger. Um, but I want to go back over these of what we can do. Where, because we all... We can all do teeny tiny little things, and if we're all doing small things, then it makes a really big difference. So let's talk about what the community can do, and I just sort of ended with that. Just smile and say hi. Mm-hmm. If the pers- if there's a new person at your table, you don't have to shake their hands. Some people got things about touch, but if you're comfortable, shake hands, say your name. Um, I would absolutely recommend just making that a, a practice of your own if you're comfortable. Any table you're sitting at at any event, if you start it, we're all followers, y'all human beings are sheep if you start i'm gonna say my name and everybody else introduce themselves everybody else will mostly follow every once in a while Mm -hmm. there's somebody who'll be like i'm not doing that shit but they're rare we're we are all gonna go okay that's the game we're playing and we'll all do it together okay so if you have that comfort level feel free okay just as a community member be mindful when you realize you're kind of comfortable in this space. You've come a few times and here's a person you've never laid eyes on before. Assume they're new. Some people will tell you, oh yeah, I used to come to this all the time, but it's been a couple years. That happened to us all the time. We were like, oh, there's a new person. I'm like, no, it's just been two years. I used to come here a million times. But that's a conversation <laughs> starter. And then yeah. you start off on equal footing because you probably know the same people. Event coordinators and hosts, you are doing, I can't say God's work, but the kink gods work or goddesses work, the deities work. I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing a good service for the fucking community. And I want to applaud you for it, even if it's not going quite the way you expected it to. Maybe it's not growing. Maybe you're having to deal with infighting. Maybe there's a lot more drama than you thought there was gonna be. Who? Yeah, people, people make drama. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you recognize from hearing us rant or you want to prevent this from ever happening, Start instituting policies within yourself, and policies, I just mean how you're gonna behave, of making sure to greet everybody. Um, If that means you go from table to table a couple times, Mm -hmm. you know, through an event, maybe your munch is two or three hours, ours usually are. At the beginning, everybody's getting settled, about halfway through, you kind of just mingle, and you just say hi. If you don't have the ability to do that, your head's just, it's not gonna happen for you, who can you depend on? Who is? mostly going to be there who are the few people maybe you have a handful of people so that if one person doesn't show then you've got a backup and you go to them and you say look can you help me out I'm trying to make sure everybody feels welcome can you just walk around and say hi to everybody you don't have to do anything more than that that truly is enough and if you start as the facilitator and as the host if you start that kind of culture at your event it will keep going people will learn. it'll take a couple times but mm-hmm. people will learn this is what we do I knew at every munch we went to, at our old munch, it was it got frustrating when people like straggled in late because literally every time somebody sat down, we went back the, around the room. Most but of the we time, did it. Well, we did it. You yeah. were, we were gonna know we weren't gonna remember your name. We all have that problem. If you have that problem, you're not alone. We all forget names. But we were going to 
each take a moment and it was a lot less intimidating if everybody had to do it and you don't have to again your own boundaries your own limits but it does put people at ease if oh i'm not the only one standing up having to say something about myself i'm not the center of attention this is just a Mm -hmm. go around the room kind of thing that is something to consider um we've gone to munches where there were name tags so you didn't even have to introduce yourself you just had to write legibly and then stick it to your chest and then somebody would go oh and they even had three colors one color for sub one color for dom and another for switch switch or unknown Yeah. yeah so think in those terms if you're not already if you are already oh my gosh one day love to come to your munch because if i can go to a place where i feel welcome and nobody knows who the fuck i am i'm okay with that that's cool (laughs) that's cool it's all about the vibe for me yeah so it is not completely in 100 percent on the existing community and the hosts new people have have a responsibility here too we all have to play our part could we have done more ourselves you know what yeah yeah and i will say sometimes you just know And what I mean is we are adults here. We are all adults here. And we have our own experiences dealing with people. And there are times when you know you could butt in. And here's how I've always done it. Because y'all, I know you're shocked. I'm a a butter inner. A butt inner? An inner butter? (laughs) I butt in a lot. None of that sounded. (laughs) It sounded like butter and I love butter. Um, (laughs) That's a whole different conversation. Butter or up? (laughs) I have no problem butting in because I, when I am nervous become more sarcastic it's <clears throat> terrifying uh, <laughs> so if somebody near me at the table is having an interesting conversation and somebody says a thing and i can come up with a quip that'll fit there and i feel comfortable i'm gonna do it here's how that works it happened at that event with that person who was trying to engage us in conversation was being really friendly that person was talking to the person who had introduced themselves to us to then yeah. insult John Brownstone's man bag um, about a rope workshop. And they were saying that at the last, this one that they had gone to, I don't know when it was, that the bottom, the rope bottom was pregnant, like six months pregnant. And they had said, are you sure? Maybe you should go to the bathroom before you get tied up. And they went, oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Pregnant bellies, bladders, changing position, rope, there's going to be pee. And I said, yeah, that was probably not the class anybody signed up for. Golden showers, peeing on rope, laughter. I was in that conversation. I felt, I knew, I got the vibe I could butt into that conversation. Because the general rule is if you're all sitting at the table together, you can, you're kind of in the conversation, unless the person sitting next to you turns their entire back to you, but whatever. So that was a moment I butted in. It was welcome. It was my little sarcastic thing because that's what I do. My experience is once I do that once or twice, usually have a table conversation going. Right. That is not what happened this time (laughs) at all. We at some point were like totally shut out. So could we have butted in? You have to read the room. Should you make a bigger step forward? I contend if you're new to a munch, whether it's the community or just your very first munch, you've already done the, the hardest part and somebody needs to meet you a little bit halfway, that's my contention. But if you read the vibe of the table you're sitting at and you can like interject a thought or they, here's the, the universal way that I've seen uh, for community members, if you're taking notes here, when you're having a conversation and you're at a table of, of, mix, of people that are like people you know, people you don't know, new people, existing, like whatever, if you make a point to kind of move your eyes mostly around the table and not stay on just one person the whole time, Mm -hmm. you are inviting everybody else that you're looking at to join that conversation. That is sort of the universal sign most of the time for I'm talking to all of you so anybody can can reply. That doesn't even require introducing yourself. You're literally just looking around the table. And I know as an adult who has gone to things and been around the people that if you look at me in this conversation, at some point, if I have something to say, as long as I'm not an ass and I don't interrupt everybody, that you're going to welcome that. You've already included me and you never had to say a word. That was literally the thing missing. That whole event. Nobody we were sitting at a table with would look us in the eye while they were having conversations. All of their conversations were private. And so we just sat there like a little island. And when somebody is, body language tells me, is clearly having a private conversation, as private as you can get in a public place, what, what kind of human being would I be if I 
did butt in. Some people can do it. Some people have that mm-hmm. ability. And if you do, great, use it. But a lot of us don't. And so, yes, new people, look for the opportunities where you can interject, where you can step forward and kind of go, oh, hi, here I am, all right? Like when they make eye contact and you join the conversation or if you laugh at a joke, like those kinds of things are part of it. But I still contend that a brand new person has already done the hardest part of the work. And so the rest of us as community members need to just take a slight step forward, make eye contact, smile. Mm -hmm. If you're up for it, say hi, introduce yourself. You know, it's, it's not as difficult as we make it out to be. And I think, and I forget this too. And so here's the thing, I don't want to come across as holier than thou. Uh, before we started hosting the munch, before we left, mm-hmm. I can think back and I, I can imagine that absolutely there were times I did not do this, that I did not go out of my way to make somebody feel welcome. Now, I have that ability and I, I prefer to use it this way. It's great for my anxiety. If we're all at a, like a big community table, I will make sure I look at everybody. That way you all know you're part of the conversation. Yeah. Um, and that's my way, but that's a really subtle way, right? And so I am aware that in the past, I have not taken this advice either. I did not think about it. I never, and that's not true, twice I had to go to a munch and be brand new without John Brownstone. But the vast majority of them, I always had John Brownstone. Now my experience is two munches, brand new. The first one, I got so lucky. I walked in, deer in headlights. My social anxiety was through the fucking roof. I was ready to cry and walk right back out before I even stepped in the door good. And a fellow baby girl saw me, lashed onto me, kept me with her the whole time, had an amazing time. The vibe was great. I went back to a similar function, but slightly different a couple weeks later. That person wasn't there. And I spent that whole event being ignored, sitting at a table with people. Nobody would make eye contact with me. Nobody would talk to me, Mm -hmm. nothing. Never went back, never went back. But I have been very spoiled. 99% of my munches have never been alone. People knew you so that yeah. they immediately wanted to talk to me. I didn't have to go through that. So I know looking back on my experiences, I have done that to people. And what I can say now is I will never do that again. Now, while we hosted, we didn't do that because we were, we have a philosophy on how we think we need to host an event mm-hmm. and what that means to be a host. But y'all, even then I go back to, if you've got anxiety issues, if you've got things that kind of keep make it hard for you to interact, guess what? He did that heavy lifting because he knew I I struggled. So he did the overt greeting, greeting, greeting. And I did the, let me include you all in these conversations. Let me make sure nobody feels like they're not part of this conversation. Let me make eye contact and smile because I could do that. Um, And that's where having a team definitely works. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm not blameless. I I know I have not done these things and let my own nervousness get in the way. And it's funny because my perspective has shifted because what did I have to be nervous about when I was surrounded by my own friends and had my own partner sitting next to me? Why was Mm -hmm. I nervous when the new person walked in? This was my space. This was my territory. I had grounding here. I had footing. I had a background. You know, if somebody was mean to me, they were going, people were going to defend me before they defend a new person who was an asshole. So what was I nervous about? So now I have that perspective and now I can see where, those times in the past, that was not, I should have done better. I could have done better. And so all I can do now is do better going forward, which is why at our sort of home munch that we've now claimed, we're like, yes, it's really brand new munch. Yeah. Um, having that feeling from Friday so fresh on Sunday, we went around the table a couple times. My name is, my name mm-hmm. is, my name is, okay, my name, shake, shake. And I, there's no way I would have. I would have wanted anybody at that table. And that was a small group. So that gets really awkward if you leave somebody out of the conversation. There was um, a small group. Two, four. What about ten? Six, eight, ten people. Ten people. So, and that, what's really cool is that person who hosts that munch is a friend of mine, but a really good friend of John Brown's. <laughs> <laughs> They're like this. Um, sorry, podcast listeners, my fingers are crossed together like besties. Y'all know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um... But we talked about it. That person has said, I'm starting my own munch because I kind of don't like how the other munches are going. And so I want something different. And her different is our vibe. And, and she said, I'm not good with big crowds. And I said, and we both 
we're like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. If this ever does grow and get big, don't disband it, don't stop doing it. We will help you. Yeah. Like, we'll take on the heavy lifting of going around and talking to people. We'll, like, you manage what you can manage and we'll do what we can do. And I know there will be enough people at that point, mm -hmm. if it got that big, where several of us would do that. Because this is the kind of munch we want to go to, where even if you yeah. don't know anybody, even if you never see some of these people again, you still had a good time. Like, that's the whole mm -hmm. point of the damn thing, is to just go and hang out for a while and talk about kink or not talk about kink, but just have a good fucking time. <sighs> I am burning up hot from the ranting. I know. Okay, so we did hit all of my points. Yes. Um... Okay, so I'll go through some of the comments. Right. Let's see. So uh, Ava's like, I wonder if the shoulder lady or any others are watching or listening to this. So here's, I am full of bravado, <laughs> but I would curl up and die. You know what's funny? I would and I wouldn't because I mean it. I don't, I don't say anything behind somebody's back that I would not be willing mm -hmm. to say to their face, but I'm really bad at confrontation. And the other thing is, People don't always recognize their own behaviors <laughs> unless you like say, you did that and then like show them the yeah. picture that they did, right? So it's funny, we're not gonna name and shame, that's not cool, but I could see where they probably wouldn't even know it was them. They'd go, oh, it's not, that, wasn't, that wasn't my event, that was some other event, or that wasn't the thing I was at. So yeah, there's a part of me that's like, maybe this will get back to people, but I figured it'll get back to people and piss them off. I'm prepared for hate coming after this particular episode. Somebody's gonna go, well, you're asking too much, or that's not fair. I know, I know, somebody's not gonna like it. That's okay. We probably wouldn't enjoy the same kind of event then. <laughs> <laughs> we just probably wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, <laughs> Ava also said um, that she said, I would love to attend an event that we host um, and go to an event with the vibe we're describing. So here's what's funny. I thought for the longest time that the vibe we had at our old munch, that was because it was that old munch and those specific people. And this new munch that we're going to, same exact vibe, totally mm -hmm. different people. Now there's some similarities because people are more similar than they are different around the world, but totally different people, totally different area, different sort of makeup of experience versus not experience, same exact vibe. And I, I think that that vibe comes from the idea that all are welcome. And it is that simple. Yeah. And that the people involved are going out of their way to make sure that all are welcome. Now there will be times where somebody, cause this happened at our old lunch, somebody will show up that you just don't like. I am, I'm an adult. I know how to smile and nod at people I don't like and be polite because you can be polite because we have too many instances in our life where we are like required to just be polite. Mm -hmm. I don't have to like you to be polite to you. Um, and it still never took away from the vibe because the mm. vibe was from top down a welcoming space where you knew at any moment you felt comfortable getting up and walking to another table to say hi or to say or to make a comment or to slip into those conversations. And I think what I have been really impressed by with our new friend, whose name I will not mention because we didn't have their consent, um, is that they took that advice, we've given that advice. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't see the community you want, if you're not happy with the events, go make your own. Mm -hmm. They took that shit literal. They didn't get the yep. advice from us. They've been a kingster longer than both of us. Both of us put together. Both almost. of us put yeah. together, yeah. But they took that advice literally. And I mean that for anybody else out there. If you try and you go to these munches and you try to get involved in your community and that community is cliquish and is not welcoming and is not creating that vibe, go create your own. It is as easy as finding a place with either a room or a table to the side holding it for like three or four of you, calling a couple of your kink friends, putting something on Fet Life and just going. If all that shows up is you and like the two friends you talk to, that's fine. But it could be that other people are fed up with the lack of welcome at the other options mm -hmm. that they have. And slowly they may gravitate towards whatever you've created. Like it sounds intimidating to create an event. I've been an event coordinator. It is intimidating to create an event, but you're literally setting aside a table for like five, six, 10 people at a restaurant, a little side room at a coffee shop. Um, if the weather wasn't so damn hot, we'd have sat outside at this restaurant because that's yeah, semi-private. They, they, they have a nice little patio area right, out there. It was there. just too damn hot right now. And once the weather turns nice, 
we will, will be out there. We will be out there, and yeah. we will be less inhibited. And we weren't <laughs> all that inhibited. No. We did look for children yeah. <laughs> to make sure we weren't saying yeah. anything children should hear. Um, but yeah, if you want, I don't say this to a complete newbie who's never been to a munch. Try to go to a few first. But if you're not happy with the vibe in your local community, go start your own thing and create the vibe you want to experience. Because mm -hmm. that is actually within your control, more con you, more control than you realize. And, and it's as difficult and as simple as just making sure everybody knows they're welcome and meaning it and sm smiling, smiling. You'd be yeah. amazed at how a whole vibe lifts just from a smile. Oh yeah. I mean, the, the, the one, <laughs> We, there was one month we were like, we'll give it a couple of, you know, chances. Maybe that first one was just a little rough. And then we went to a, a munch with the vibe we like. And we went, no, we're not, we're not putting ourselves through that. And I truly, the people we got along with at that first munch experience, mm -hmm. people that you had met already, that's fine. Yeah. But they smiled. Yes. And nobody else smiled at us the whole time. If they walked past our table to the bathroom, they literally did not. They either stared through us, didn't look at us, or looked, looked at us away. and didn't smile. Yeah. <laughs> like, did we, did somebody piss on your Wheaties? Did we, like, like invade your space by coming to this much? And that was the munch from a month ago. Yeah. We did not, we didn't get that at the Friday thing, but no. we were ignored is what we were. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can create a welcoming vibe on your own or talk you know if you're friends with somebody who's hosting an event it's it's truly as easy as yeah. just smiling at people and saying hi to everybody especially if you're the host if you're the host as people walk up and walk in you say hi to everybody you make sure they at least feel seen by you if you're a host yeah i think that's that's probably it right yeah okay yeah oh let's see <laughs> okay Oh, and Kitten Love says that um, they're new to the community and love that there's a daytime weekday lunch munch, which makes it smaller. Yes, I love smaller yeah. munches. I love smaller munches as long as the vibe is good, mm -hmm. which that matters. But yeah, and if you have that luxury in your area, somebody's doing something daytime, it will almost automatically be a little bit smaller. Go to that first, for sure. Um, you're for the munch we go to now, what, that's the first Sunday of every month? Is yes, okay. first Sunday. First Sunday. The first time you went to it, how many people did it have? Like five? Um, six. Six. And the second time I had ten. And, yep. and next month I might have six again. But that really small time, because it's new, that small group dynamic allows for the vibe to kind of flow. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to ignore people when there's 30 of you. It's really hard when there's only six yeah. and you're all sitting at the same table. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you, if you have that option, which is why... Um, uh, I encourage you to search FET and figure out how mm -hmm. far you're willing to, to drive if you don't have anything yeah. really close and try a few of them. You know, I, a few weeks ago, I would have said, oh, go to it a couple of times before you give up on it. And now I'm kind of like, why? Don't put yourself, if it's miserable, don't go back. Go look for something mm -hmm. else. And if failing that, make your own. That's true. You don't, uh, y'all, if you're brand new to munches or to kink in general, there's no degree. There's nobody who awards mm -hmm. you the honor of being allowed to set up a lunch or to set up a game night or to set up an event. Yeah. Like nobody like gives you that that honor. You just mm -hmm. see something missing and go, huh, I think I'll just plan something and put it up on Fet Life. And ta-da, you're done. That's how you get it. So mm -hmm. Oh, my throat hurts. <laughs> and, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's a big munch or a small nope. munch. You know, our, our old uh, hometown munch that we, we attended, um, there would be times there'd only be four people there. Yeah. And there were other times there could be upwards of 20 people there. We had multiple tables filled in the place. Yeah, God. That was, we talked about this. The one at Christmas, they gave us the smaller room because we'd been having smaller uh, munches. And that yeah. was the day we filled every single seat. And then and we then gave up our seats, our seats so, so more other people, people could, could sit. sit. And the air conditioning didn't really no. get to that room. And yeah, I know it's no. December, but it was 20 plus people in a teeny room. It was hot. Mm -hmm. And we gave away we gave away kinky fuckery that we, time we, too. They, we had a, a, a giveaway, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's <coughs> that's the thing I've been ranting about for days yeah. on it. Maybe now I'll stop ranting. Yeah. Maybe I can now like let it go. We have found our munch. Mm -hmm. That's the one we're going to go to. Yep. 
Um, we may go to the educational events like the one we went to on Friday, but we will skip them any munch mm-hmm. that is offered ahead of time. Yeah, the we not we're, interested. We're glad we went ahead and went to the workshop. The workshop mm-hmm. was actually fantastic. Um, it was it was really good. And um, you know, I I know a lot of people that listen to us are are new people, but I I just want to challenge the the people who have been in the community for a long time, who who attend the munches and stuff. When you see somebody new, whether they're new to the community or, or new to the area, reach out to people, okay? Um, you know, even though someone may have been in the community for years and years somewhere else, going to a new place still is, is still difficult. You know, re- reach out to people. You know truly a um, smile and a nod if yeah. that's all you can do you might have done more than anybody else in the room right just saying yeah yeah now i have had i have had fun so i think i do this too i think this is probably human nature mm-hmm. so when somebody new is new to the munch walks in i i probably have done this too you default to thinking they're new to kink and i've enjoyed over the past however long that we've been starting to kind of, especially you and I together, watching the expressions change in people's eyes and the way they talk to us. And we're like, oh no, we've been together for years and we do this and we do that. And like I said, we don't announce that loving BDSM, no. that like means nothing to almost nobody. Like it, it means something to y'all because you watch and you listen, but it's rare out in the wider world that, you know, anybody knows who we are. So we don't like sailing on that, you know, we don't, but we talk about how we've been together for several years and how we did long distance and how we've tried this kink and that kink and blah, 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 and how he makes kinky toys and that people's, like people's whole view of us changes. (laughs) (laughs) It would be okay if I was completely new, but oh, oh, I mean, I had somebody trying to do some BDSM 101 to me the other day and I was like, yeah, I've had that conversation. I did that smile and nod thing. I, I don't know mm. if it's a Southern thing, if it's a um, being raised female thing. Like, I don't know, but uh, people tell me stuff I like in my head. I'm like, I fucking know that shit. But what I do outwardly is I just smile and go, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> really? Like, I'm really good at that shit because I don't like confrontation. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying be like me. I really mm-hmm. am not. So yeah, okay, that's right. the rant. Okay. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I feel better. Do you feel better? Good, yeah, I do. If you are new and you have not been to a munch, I hope we have not scared you off. Um, we might have, but give Hopefully it a chance not. anyway. Like, like, pull all of your courage together, go. Yeah. Just know that if that event does not have the vibe that makes you comfortable, Oh, if you keep trying, you will find the one that does. I, I'd exist. like to. I'd like to think because of the community that I, I entered into, um, that there were numerous munches. I, I want to think that the experience we had Friday is is actually the minority. True, but I also don't have the time and energy to go to every well, single no. event to find out. <laughs> no, we don't. So we okay. found ours. We're yes. good. We're done. We're gonna go into yeah. the. Bonus section. section. Yes, that's a thing. We do that. Uh That's right. Okay. All right. So are we good? Probably not. Okay. (laughs) Keep Keep it it kinky, kinky, (laughs) y'all. We'll see you next week. (laughs) And now you have to write down the magic numbers. Are you writing down the magic numbers, Daddy? You're not writing. We have crickets who are waiting, Daddy. Can I talk to the cricket chat, please? Pretty please? Would you like to talk to the crickets? I would love to t- talk to the crickets. And I'm hoping the crickets would like me to talk to them. They go might ahead. be really tired of me talking at this <laughs> go, one. go ahead, baby girl. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that too later on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one I knew I was going to pay for. It. <laughs> for anybody who did not hear the podcast intro, I still <laughs> contend I was just pointing out obvious things and getting him to stop swishing his ice into the microphone. Ah, I love you, Daddy. We have no mail this week. Nope. Um, we want to do our quick patron shout out yes. to Lorana, Kalina, J, Conduit of Queerness itself, and Laura and James. and James. We love you. We love you. We love all of you. We love all of you who listen, and we mm-hmm. love all of you who watch, and we love all of you who like talk to us online. Mm-hmm. So, our 
our kinky social life was basically everything we've done yeah and it was an entire episode so what mm-hmm. the fuck is there to talk about oh oh i know what i know what i tweeted this on my personal account oh oh oh, oh, oh my god oh, this is oh. so funny so we have <laughs> let me give you a teen time backstory <laughs> yeah. we have been struggling with our kinky fuckery lately mm-hmm. like we tried to have one scene and i ended up in tears not the good kind and nothing happened and we're slowly easing back into things. Yes. We're we're get I'm in a better headspace. You're in a better headspace. We're back yep. on the same page. That's why we did the whole episode last week on being out of sync because we had been because we talked about that. Okay, so we're like I've had some sex toys to play with, and I mm-hmm. like there, and I have also rearranged my schedule so I feel a little bit more in control mm-hmm. with it all, and like I have time, right? Which is important when you want to have the kinky fuckery. But you feel like you got time for it. So, that all said, we're we've been easing back into our kinky fuckery, and yes. our sex life, and it is Wednesday, so this was Tuesday night. We get into some kinky fuckery, and it starts out fun and playful. It was. We we actually even went to bed early. Last we went to bed night. like an we're, hour early yeah. just for this. Yep. Okay, I was charging the sex toy. I pulled out the new lube to try. I got the cum towel out so I didn't make the bed wet. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, hey, I've read all the Masturbation Monday posts. Can we go fuck now? Like, I, we, <laughs> I did my part. We were ready to go. So it started. <laughs> He's spanking. I'm bent over the bed. That's what we do at night. He spanks my ass as I'm getting on the bed, actually, right? Yes. I squeak. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I have a voice that carries. And the moment I squeak, I'm going to go with a coincidence. A car alarm across the street goes <laughs> off, <goes> off. <laughs> and we fall out. That's the funniest shit I've ever seen. We are just rolling in the bed right. with laughter. We know it's not really me, but that yeah. was the funniest shit. Okay. But the timing was just perfect. You couldn't have asked for it to be better. Yeah. So we do our thing, and there are many orgasms, and there's fucking, and there's more spanking. Like, yep. I got, I used a sex toy, I got fucked, and then I went, hey, daddy, can I have an over-the-knee spanking? And he goes, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... Flying across his lap, <laughs> landing like a gymnast or a swimmer or somebody who's graceful. Get my ass beat. He beats my ass. And it was so good. I didn't even squeak. Like, it hurt, but it didn't. It wasn't the ow, ow. It was the, oh, yeah, keep fucking yeah. doing this shit. Spank, 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 spank. He gets harder. He gets louder. I. It was only towards the end I started making noise. Mm-hmm. We finish. We. We're, we're laying in bed. We're, we're not ready to go to sleep. We're just laying in bed like we normally do. And we're just kind of touching and talking and doing, doing, our, thing. doing our thing. We had taken um, a sleep aid so we could like, because we were kind of hyped up. We, we were so all could... white, wired up. And, right. Yeah. And, we, and we're naked because we've been doing yeah. the fucking and the spanking and we're in the bed. And the doorbell, doorbell rings. rings. And we're like, what the, the fuck? Hell? So now I'm scared because I live in a world where people do not ring my doorbell once the sun goes down. That is not my <laughs> life. We're pulling on clothes. He goes out first. Big protector man just w- opens the door and walks outside. I'm like, you, what What if that was like, I, I don't know why criminals would ring the doorbell to lure you out, but maybe. <laughs> and it's actually the police. The police. <laughs> like, I open the door and I see a uniform <laughs> and I'm like, First thing that came to my mind was, were we that loud? I know. How loud did we get? <laughs> How thin are these walls? Right? I thought the I neighbors thought the could... neighbors were far enough away. <laughs> How loud is she? <laughs> Quite. <Yeah>. Uh... <laughs> so it it turned out he um, they were canvassing the neighborhood because there had been some problems with cars being mm-hmm. being vandalized. And they wanted to know if we had seen anything or heard anything or our cars had been vandalized. Right. <laughs> we're like, nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. We're nope, fine. Nope, nope. I was like, yeah, I, I, I know the uh, the neighbor talked to me this morning. He came over and told me. and The neighbor I thought was an asshole. Now I have to rethink that. Yeah. Fuck. I hate it when I'm wrong. And, uh, you know, no, we, we always make sure our cars are locked. But uh, yeah, they were they were just canvassing the neighborhood and let people know to to keep an eye out, make sure the cars are locked. And I'm not unconvinced, 
that they came to our door 45 minutes ago, <laughs> heard what was going on, because our bedroom actually faces the front lawn. Yeah. Like, our bedroom is really close to the front door. <laughs> like, really, like, a few feet away from the front door. <laughs> so, I like to tell myself, they came around, heard what they heard, yeah. and went, we'll be back. Mm-hmm. We'll go down to the end of the road, and we'll come back this way. Right. Yeah, it was... <laughs> Perfect timing. We could not have we could not have planned Couldn't that. Planned it, it was if we hilarious. To. And then I was like, "Yeah, that's on brand for us." Mm-hmm. Because y- y'all, this is. I would love to tell you that there's a lot of mystique and mystery and seduction and blah 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 when we get kinky and naked and whatever. I think that ship has sailed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that's in us anymore. And here's how I know: I am laid over his lap. Getting my ass pounded with this hard ass spank, and I'm in heaven. And barehanded. Barehanded. And we are talking about what we need to do tomorrow. <laughs> we're talking about what our plans are for this coming weekend. Like we we were chatting. Yeah. Chatting. And I was still having a great time. I was still having a great time. Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, I should have said something at the top of the episode and you got me distracted. <laughs> Okay, so if you're watching live as we record the video part of this in the audio, this is Wednesday. But if you're a podcast listener, the earliest you can hear it is Friday. And here's what is special about Friday, July 12th. That would be John Brownstone's birthday. So even if you hear this late, maybe you don't catch the video or listen to the audio until Saturday or Sunday, I don't care. But if you can hear my voice and you have just found out that it is John Brownstone's birthday on Friday, July 12th. Mm. Tweet at him, message him, Fat Life message him, King Space message him, Instagram message him, eat whatever, and tell him happy birthday, please. Flood the fucking gates. Friday, July 12th. I thought you loved me. I do love you. I want you to feel all the love, too. You're going to get my birthday spanking. I know. I'm so excited. I hope you're up to it. I That's don't know. That's a few years there. <laughs> 58 and one to and grow one on. one to grow on. <laughs> so, I also, I had this thought the other day. We get, a, we get people every once in a while who are like, and I know it's probably because they're, one, you, I don't know what age you look like, but people are always shocked when they find out that you're about to be 58. <laughs> I don't know what people, age people think I am, I'm about to be 40. But I get a lot of questions about, well, can't you talk about BDSM for older people? And they talk about like their late 50s. I'm like, well, we are because he's in his late 50s and he's doing BDSM, BDSM for older people. Um, <laughs> I don't say it like that. I'm nicer, <laughs> but I do find it kind of humorous. <laughs> That's, you know, and sometimes what they mean is like limited mobility or chronic conditions. And I got to work on creating a resource for that because we don't have a resource for that. Um, But when they just mean, well, once you hit a certain age, aren't you supposed to do things differently? Not unless you lose some function and capability. This is is what BDSM looks like in your late 50s. Ta-da! Jeff Brownstone! Yay. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Look. (laughs) We're, I'm going to take you to get a steak for your birthday Yes. with a dessert, maybe something to drink. Like, oh, he always gets something to drink. I mean, like a Guinness or a Jack and Coke or something. Um, and a coffee and maybe a cigar. And there'll be a blowjob because there always is. Yeah. So. And like, I know what I'm getting for my birthday. Well, you know what you're getting from you for your birthday. Well. Are you going to tell them what you're getting for your birthday? Because there will have to be pictures. Yeah. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Um, I'm getting a, a utility kilt. Oh, John Brownstone's sexy fucking legs will be on display. Y'all, <laughs> he's got the sexiest fucking legs. It's from the years when he owned all his own lawn business and was like doing that and riding a motorcycle. Like he's got thighs of steel, which you won't see in a kilt unless the wind comes <laughs> in. But he's got like from the knee down, even his legs are sexy. My legs don't look that good. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to see some job brownstone leg, mm. brown chicken. And Eva, sir, has his birthday tomorrow. Well, and our friend. So happy birthday to him. Their birthday is also on the Thursday, which yeah. we're recording on Wednesday. And so, yes. Yeah. Oh, dates are hard, y'all. Um, yeah, I have to at some point not have you come with me somewhere so I can get something for your birthday. I'm really suck at this and well, yet I'll and be I'll be in my shop in the morning I'm working tomorrow oh well yeah. then guess you're SOL I know I'll have to like be sneaky about it and here's what's <laughs> funny here's what's funny y'all I say that I act that way but you know what'll have to happen on my birthday 
I'll have to be a fucking princess. <laughs> of everything I've ever wanted. And it will have to be amazing. Not just because it's my 40th, but because I'm a baby girl and it's my birthday. And yet I'm like, oh, I haven't even gotten you a card yet, daddy. <laughs> I love you. I love you, but I'll suck your cock. I'm like, no. <laughs> I think that's I can get that any day. Oh, God, I thought you meant like from anywhere. And I was like... Yeah, I guess technically you can, but who have you been talking to? <laughs> also, I know who you've been talking to, and yeah, that's I'd be okay with that too. Um, <laughs> so, <sighs> yeah, this... Um, See, 12 is a good number, Ben. Yeah, Ben's birthday is March 12th. Baby girl's yeah. birthday is May 12th. See, I'm, um, I'm October 30th. Yeah. I'm not quite Halloween, and I'm okay with it. Also, I don't care about Halloween because my birthday is right before it. <laughs> and clearly, of the two, my birthday should be the national holiday. <laughs> Duh. No, I don't actually believe that. <laughs> don't actually believe that. Anyway. But I was an only child, and so kid birthdays, like, I was the only one who got that my whole life. And so my birthdays were, like, in our family. They were, like, a national holiday. It was the <laughs> most important day of the year, clearly. I don't really believe that. Considering what I've done for the almost 14 year old's birthday and the amount of money we've spent and the thing, oh shit, I still have to go deal with his cake. So yeah, well, see, mother of somebody, the year here. Somebody there, the November 17th, fellow hey. Scorpio. Ah, oh, yeah, the Scorpios are a fun, yeah. fun lot. Yep. You and your damn cancers, all your emotions. I don't know how to handle it, y'all. He's all emotional. He can watch a SAG commercial. And become I am not that bad. You can. I find it so endearing. I am not at all like freaked out when a guy cries. I think it's great. But I am a Scorpio bitch. It's like <laughs> fucking a. What are you crying about? And then I feel like shit because that's a shitty thing to say to somebody. <laughs> I got great bedside manner too. Don't be sick around me. I'm like, can't you just fucking suck it up? No. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think it, though. I think it really loud. <laughs> we have gone so far off the rails. We should probably anyway, be done. Yeah. Other than that, I've been spending a lot of time in the shop. Yeah. Making you have. lots of stuff. You have. And uh, I'm, I'm booked so far for two craft shows. Come fall, waiting to hear on a third. Yeah. You're going to be busy. I'm never going to see you. I know. And um, I've been working on some... A lot of vanilla stuff, and I have some kinky stuff in the works. But yeah, you haven't been working on some of it yet. Well, I, I, my bandsaw. <gasps> That's right. That's right. You broke. need your new saw blade thingy. My, 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 my bandsaw blade broke, and it, it's the thin one that I do the, the, the um, scrolling cuts with. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not able to do that, and I can't find a blade here where we are and um, I'm going to have to go to Ocala or Orlando I know. next week to get that replaced. So um, Captain's asking, do I have, yeah, I, I you do. You have to finish the questions the podcast listeners know what you're going to answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, see, I keep you around for something. I I, I'm, I'm just good not real something. good at this. So Captain asked if, if I have separate social uh, for, for my shop work, and, and I do. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram, The Wood Dom. The Wood Dom. The Wood Dom. And, All in word. No and spaces. Twitter as well. Right. But if you follow his personal Instagram, Kinky John Brownstone, every once in a while he'll show what he's working on. That's kinky. Yes. And of course, if you're a patron yep. of ours on Patreon, patreon.com slash lords. We show pictures there before we show them anywhere else. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the Wood Dom, T-H-E-W-O-O-D-D-O-M, the Wood Dom. Yep. Or Kinky John Brownstone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, so anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, plan a trip out to. Oh, darn. You're going to have to go buy something for your shop. Yeah. Aww. What, am I, what do I get to buy for me since you get to buy that for you? You 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 signed up for Adore Me. You got I all that. I know. I got a subscription service for my underwear. And that sounds like, what? No, it's called Adore Me if you don't know it. Oh, my gosh. And once a month, I'm getting matching bra and panty sets. And YouTube Live is not the place to show you. <laughs> 
but I'm wearing the cutest bra. I'm ready to take it off though. And the cutest panties, which you can't feel that I'm wearing, so they must be comfy. But yes, yeah, such pretty underwear. <laughs> well, when I finally looked at him and went, it's actually not normal for a woman who wears bras mostly regularly to only own two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I've been buying underwear. And I bought a new dress that I'm wearing on our date night. Yes. And then I bought a special bra to go with that. Well, because I had to push the girls up. The way the dress is made, like, if you don't have some cleavage showing, it doesn't look right. So I made sure I had some cleavage showing. I'm going to look cute as fuck. And we will take pictures and put them on Instagram because that's what we do. So. Okay. <sighs> and Ben is giving us good advice as yes. usual. Ben, would you just like to become our producer? Because that just might be right? easier. He gives us really good advice on video. If you are sticking with podcast audio, I firmly recommend that until we get our shit together on video recording. Yeah. Because our video, part of it is we're using a shitty camera. Right. The good cameras we keep looking at are several hundred dollars. And so, like, at some point we're going to have to just swallow real big mm-hmm. and buy the fucking and camera. And the bullet on it. Um, especially if we actually want our YouTube channel to grow because if your video yeah. quality sucks, ain't nobody going to watch it. Right. I don't think we're that good at education or entertainment for yeah. people who don't love us to watch and us anyway. Way way in the beginning, he did say our, our audio has gotten better. And yeah, one of, the, one of the things I did to help that along, Ben, was um, when I edit the podcast, um... I started using the uh, compression feature. For the rest of us, we're like, what? We don't know. Okay, so what that does when he would say, like, when we laughed, it spiked real high. Right, and I have one of those laughs that does that naturally. Yeah, and and what the compression does is it it brings it down so it's equalized with the rest of the audio so it doesn't Mm, spike. Yeah, I just, one of these days, my hope and goal and plan and love would be to have people who help us do these things so we can focus on the actual talking part yeah we don't make that kind of money yet i know but we're working on it Mm -hmm. and it's it's possible ben we we have a fairly big package as far as the isp to everybody who could not hear what john brownstone is referring to in live chat the pro- big problem is yeah. our internet connection, and yes, but we also do have a crappy com- uh, camera. But yes, right now we're having some weird issue with our internet connection. Yeah, very weird issue that we don't mm, we haven't been having. I don't. No, think. It, it happened once before. It seems to be sporadic, and I can't really pin it down. But that company we get our internet through one. We have the biggest package that they offer because we have four people who all have multiple devices. But two, they offer a bigger package, and we haven't looked into haven't it. Haven't looked like, into it. Better, we need to. Yeah. better, more, more, yeah. faster, supposedly. It's we also a lot more money. It is a lot more money, <laughs> but our business don't run if we don't have good I internet. Know. I know. <laughs> and now we have bored everybody, and if anybody is still sticking around, wow. Wow, okay. you're fucking amazing. All right. Um, we love you guys. Yes, we, we have do. rambled. We are an hour and a half on mm-hmm. the live stream. I don't know what that translates to for the podcast. Actually, Ben, it we used to have Spectrum, and they were great where we were. Yeah. Um, now we have Cox. Yeah, and we knew Cox wasn't that yeah. great either. But they had the mo- the highest speed. Spectrum here is like, I mean, you might as well do the Pony Express to get right. something downloaded or uploaded yep. or anything. So. It's and a cluster. Our yeah. internet is a cluster, y'all. It is a cluster. It is a cluster. It's a cluster. But we're, we... We're on a waiting list to get fiber out here. I'm going to hold my breath. Yeah. <laughs> and our poor old dog is like doing the old man cough. Yeah. Hey, Saki baby. You're not going to come be on camera, are you? <laughs> I bet we could keep people around if we just put our dog up. I'll, I'll do that. I'll check all the connectors again, but... Anyway, we're just babbling. I know. Now. Yes, we are. We really, really are. And if you have stuck with us this long, thank you. And yep. if you're like, fuck that shit, it's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. We do the bonus section for the bullshit. So, yeah. It's okay. All right. Does my dog want to come up so people can see him on the camera? No, he does not. <laughs> he just put all four paws down and went, nope. Come on, Saki. Are you kissing into the microphone? Somebody out there is getting their heart Twitter painted. <laughs> I know there is some John, strong John Brownstone love out there in the world. It's okay. Right. I ain't mad at you. Okay. 
old man dog just was not fuck that shit. Yeah. So I'm going to say fuck that shit too. We got to okay, go. Okay, yeah. Should let all these people go. And we love you guys. We love you. Thank you so much Thank you for, for sticking with us through mm-hmm. bad internet connections and bad cameras and rambly Ram- podcast episodes yep. and forgetting that the podcast listeners can't see any of this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you know... Gosh, I can't imagine what the judges of the podcast awards will listen to <laughs> to determine if we are worthy of an award. We probably are not, but we have a good fucking time. Right. So there you go. We love you guys. Yep. Bye. Bye.